When it comes to NASCAR, you probably think of something like this. Get that shit out of here. This is what we're talking about. Alright, so this is going to be uh, something new, a different type of track guide, if you will. And I'll just say a few things, not really a key to the race car because I didn't have any time for that because I didn't really think I'd be doing this. So I'm just saying, take care of the rears and the right front because you can do, you can kill both. Because I've done that already. The line is pretty, uh, pretty much run anywhere. And these cars have a lot of powers. So restarts are key. Again, it's been a long time since I said that. I think like 2018 was the last time I was able to say that. You know, when cars had uh, power. Real power. None of this 670 nonsense. We're talking close to 850 plus. With no grip. So anyways, we're just going to go down pit road like usual. And uh, we'll talk about the lap and stuff. So yeah. All right, first things first, we're gonna make our way to pit road. I'm gonna go into three like normal, maybe a little higher than normal. I downshifted there. Strong possibility of green flag. Pissed offs, maybe, I don't know. Downshift to second and kind of underdrove the entry there, but there's your pit road entrance. Let's beat that up. There's your exit cone. Start accelerating, stay on this axis road. Remember this car has a lot, a lot of power. So wheel spin's a big issue. You can, you can pretty much get wheel spin anytime you want. And there, I barely made the blue cone, and there we go. All right, so we're gonna take this lap, and things are a little bit more unconventional than normal. But let me throw my stuff up on screen. Uh, what I did, break bias was 60. Percent, 12 to one. Pretty, pretty much everything default, with the exception of break bias. I went down to 60, so. Here you want to get a pretty good run out of out of four. And one you're just gonna let's just say you're gonna overdrive it. Not sure why, but you'll see when we get there. And that's about it. This car's a tight entry loose off. That's pretty much all I can say. Really fun though. So let's see how this limp was done. Then we'll go ahead and get into the juicy stuff. There we have it for a 33-0, which the really fast guys are in the 29-9s. So let me back that up. And like I said, you want to start your whole lap out of turn four. If you screw that up, you'll probably lose a little bit of time, which I probably might have. So we're going to make our way into one, and then I'll slow a moment to unpack everything that's happening. Alright, so we're making our way into one, and right here, you see the little caution light there, or green in this case. That's when I start my turn in, but you can still see I'm pretty hard on the throttle still. 
and that's going to continue. We're aiming basically right, right towards the white line. We're going to kind of aim right at it, and that's when everything starts to happen. So let me slow mo it a little bit. We're turning in. Still on throttle by about half just to make sure it goes down to the white line. And once I'm getting there, I hit the brakes enough to slow the car down. Then I'm going to let it roll all the way up to the outside wall. I had to use a little bit of corrective brake there, but let's just see how this goes. Once I start approaching the wall, I start using the throttle to kind of get the rear end to turn. Because I mentioned this thing doesn't turn on entry, but it does on exit. And the closer you get to the wall, the more stable it seems to get as long as you don't touch it. You're also going to want to be using more throttle here than the bottom because you need that momentum to carry or this won't work. And you can see I'm barely steering the car. That's how on edge it is. So let's make our way to three. Where a similar concept happens is that we're chucking it in far, but... So let me pause it. I'm doing my turn in again. Pretty much center with that damn caution line. I don't know why I use that. Or I use those little brace there on the windshield to kind of judge where I'm gotta turn in and you'll see a white line on the track but we're gonna turn in when we see those billboards I'm still on throttle now I'm lifting on the brakes you can see where I did that so let me try that again so I'm looking for a white line you see it right there that's when I lift I'm turning in we're trying to get to the bottom I have to use a little bit of brakes you can see the front end sliding there I'm using some brakes still till it gets to rotate on its own and then I release the brakes right about in I guess right here should be at least I'm trying to let it roll to the bottom, but I didn't want to give it too much time. So I start picking the throttle up a little bit earlier than normal. Pretty much right here. You'll start to see some green start to show up. There it is. And again, just like turn one, you want to play with the throttle all through this corner because it is very tricky. And most notably, when you see these little patches on the track, like right there that I'm going over right now. It looks like miscolored track. You see two more right here. There's one in the center, one near the outside there. That's when the car gets really weird. That's why you see I'm still playing with the throttle. Because it starts to go from push to extremely loose. Then you power out. And that's when you make your way to the line for that 33-0. Alright, that's it for this track, guy. A little bit different than normal, but this car is way more rewarding and fun compared to what we have now and i know it's the arca car but they threw in cup horsepower from those days and i think there were some other tweaks too but yeah it's pretty cool really fun car i'm so glad they did this because it takes us back to the well fun days anyways simmers and chewies i'm 